We are in Psalm number 105. Nasa Psalm 105 na tayo. At kung alam ninyo yung divisions ng Book of Psalms, uh, matatapos na tayo sa Book number 4. Isang chapter na lang next Wednesday, Psalm 106. At isasarado na natin yung Book 4. At bubuksan na natin yung Book 5 pinaka last section ng book of Psalms. And so, we're really excited about that. Uh, so, sa pag-aaral natin ng Psalms, yung 103, sineselebrate ng Psalm na yan, na si Jehovah ay ang Redeemer. Savior Redeemer. Yung Psalm 104, sineselebrate yon na si Jehovah yung Creator natin. Dito naman sa Psalm 105, we will see that Jehovah is the covenant keeper. The covenant keeper. He gave a covenant and he keeps his promises. Tapos um, <clears throat> sa Psalm 106, next week, Lord willing, we'll look at it and we'll see that God is the Jehovah deliverer. He is the deliverer. Uh, yung kapalpakan ng tao, pero yung faithfulness ng Panginoon. So, uh, halos magkaparehas yung tema ng 105 at saka 106. Kaya lang, sa 105, ang focus talaga dito ay yung Diyos. Tapos sa 106, yung focus ay yung kapalpakan ng tao. At pag-deliver ng Panginoon sa tao. So anyway, we're looking at Psalm number 105. Um, Let's go ahead and read together just the first six verses. Yung unang anim na verses, basahin natin. Uh, page 545 sa Bible, pero nandiyan na sa, sa study notes yung 105. But if you're using the sample Bible, page 545. Anyway, basahin muna natin yung first six verses, tapos pag-pray tayo and pasok tayo sa pag-aaral ng Psalm 105. Uh, Psalm 105, 1 to 6 together. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, call upon His name, make known His deeds among the people. Sing unto Him, sing psalms unto Him, talk ye of all His wondrous works. Glory ye in His holy name, let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and His strength, seek His face forevermore. Remember His marvelous works that He hath done. His wonders and the judgments of his mouth. Ye seed of Abraham, his servant. Ye children of Jacob, his chosen. Let's pray and ask the Lord to bless him. Father in heaven, we are thankful, God, that you are a covenant-keeping, faithful God. We're not always faithful to you, but you are always faithful to us. And so, Lord, we worship you and thank you and praise you for being that to us. We ask, God, your hand of blessing upon us as we look into the word of God. Uh, we pray the Holy Spirit of God would speak to our hearts, draw us near to you, and help us, Lord, to uh, serve you and remember these uh, uh, commands of Psalm 105 and help us to apply it to our lives in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. and amen. <clears throat> All right, so um, itong Psalm 105, ito ay para siyang isang historical psalm. Uh, history. Kasaysayan ng bansang Israel. And uh, <clears throat> nagsisimula ito sa ilang mga um, dapat natin gawin. So, God is expecting us to... Uh, so, this is a historical psalm itong pinag-aaralan natin. Kasaysayan ng bansang Israel. Makikita mo ang summary ng bansang Israel sa Psalm 105, magmula sa Abrahamic Covenant hanggang sa conquest ng Cana ni Joshua. At kung tutusin, kung nag-aaral ka ng salita ng Diyos, dapat alam mo talaga yung overview ng kasaysayan ng, ng, um, ng Israel. At kung naalala ninyo nung nag-aaral tayo ng Book of Genesis, you remember the Book of Genesis is divided into two sections. Yung unang section ay yung mga four events na napaka-importante. Tapos yung pangalawang section sa gitna noon, uh, patung, pat, patungo sa katapusan ng Genesis, ay patungo sa apat na napaka-importanteng pamilya. The four patriarchs. Who are they? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. Correct. 
Very good. So makikita natin dito yung si Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. Now, um, so let's go ahead and uh, before we get to the history part, let's look at what Psalm 105 is celebrating. Kung ano yung tinuturo sa atin ng Psalm. Sabi dito sa verse number one, O give thanks unto the Lord. So nagsisimula yung Psalm doon sa mga bagay na dapat natin gawin sa Panginoon. First of all, inaasahan ng Diyos, we give thanks. So bilangin nyo yung mga, mga inaasahan ng Diyos na gawin natin. We need to give thanks unto the Lord. Is there a reason to thank God? Yeah, there's a reason to thank God. We ought to thank Him for life. We ought to thank Him for health. We ought to thank Him for family. We ought to thank Him for friends. We, ought to, we have everything to thank God for. You know the most important thing we should thank God for? That He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. Biro mo, patungo tayo sa langit dahil sa grasya ng Diyos. Anong, anong ginawa natin para maku- makuha yung grasya ng Diyos? Wala. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy, He saved us. So kung ikaw ay saved, meron kang daylang kung bakit dapat magpasalamat ka sa Diyos. Kahalimbawa, kainin ka ng cancer. Kahit na ganoon, yung katawan mabubulok sa ano, dito sa lupa. Yung espiritu naman, malaya. Kakpiling ng Diyos. We have every reason to thank the Lord. What else does it say? Call upon His name. That's another thing we should be doing. Call upon His name. What does it mean to call upon His name? It means to pray. <laughs> Do you pray? Okay. So, inaasahan ng Diyos, we give thanks and we call upon His name. Make known His deeds. Make known. These are things that God expects us to do. Ano ibig sabihin ng make known His deeds among the people? Yung mga nakakasalamuhan natin sa mundo, hindi nila alam ang patungkol sa Diyos. Dapat tayo ang nagpapa, nagpapa, ano yung known, make known? Laganap. Yes, tayo ang nagpapalaganap ng mga patungkol sa Diyos, sa gawa ng Diyos. So, alimbawa, pag may bagyo, o, oh, Anong sasabihin natin? Alam mo, kamay ng Diyos yan. Pag yung taal, sumabog, daliri ng Diyos yan. Hindi alam ng tao na yung mga ganitong bagay ay galing talaga sa Diyos. And it is, sino nakakaalam ng patungkol sa Diyos? Yung hindi nag-church o yung nag-church? Ay, yung nag-church kung nakikinig ka sa church. Kung, nakik- kung meron kang biblical church na nagtuturo ng Bible. So, nasa sa atin na kailangan tayo ang maglaganap ng information sa mga tao. That's our responsibility. And God, God is expecting us to thank Him, to call on Him, to make known His deeds among the people. Now, verse number two, sing. Sing unto the Lord. Sing unto Him. Sing psalms unto Him. So, inaasahan ng Diyos na umawit tayo. Hindi tayo umaawit dahil maganda yung boses natin. Hindi tayo umaawit dahil wala tayong alam na iba pang gawin. Umaawit tayo dahil nais ng Diyos na makarinig ng awit mula sa atin. God expects us to sing unto Him. <clears throat> ano pa? Talk ye of all His wondrous works. Talk. Pero hindi lang magsalita. Talk about His wondrous works. Uh, so yung mga miracles na ginagawa ng Panginoon, the things that God is doing in our midst, we ought to be talking about that. The wondrous works of God. Isa sa mga uh, dahilan kung bakit encouragement, dapat yung church, dahil sa church, pinag-uusapan natin yung wondrous works of the Lord. Okay? Hindi tayo talaga interesado kung ano yung nangyari sa'yo sa trabaho, kung ano yung nangyari sa, sa, sa tahanan mo, or whatever. We are interested, ano yung wondrous works ng Panginoon that God did for you? That's what we fellowship about. That's what we talk about. We talk about the wondrous works. Eh, yung mundo, ano kaya yung tinotok nila? Bulok, drugs, immorality, karumihan. Hindi ganyan sa church. Hindi ganyan sa congregation ng Panginoon. 
All right, verse number three. Glory ye in his holy name. Glory. God wants us to glory in his holy name. So ano ibig sabihin ng glory? Uh, bigyan ng kaluwalhatian ang Diyos. You know, how do you glory in his holy name? Well, you make God number one in your life. Sino ba talaga ang number one sa buhay mo? Dapat si Lord. And so you glory in His holy name. Do you know His name? His name is Jehovah. Isa yun sa mga pangalan ng Diyos. At yan ang pinaka-personal niyang pangalan. Jehovah. <clears throat> tapos Lord. Tapos God. Tapos Jesus. Tapos Holy Spirit. These are the names of God. Tapos sa... Uh, Meron pa akong ilang pages ng mga pangalan ni Jehovah na habang nag-aaral tayo ng Book of Psalms, kinakatalog ko yung mga pangalan niya na sa 70 nasa 70 yata or 80 na ng mga pangalan na nandito sa Book of Psalms. <clears throat> so, we need to glory in his holy name. How, uh, let me ask you a question. How do you glory in the Lord? You make him number one. Alam mo pag kinakausap ka ng tao, madedetect ng tao kung ano yung number one sa buhay mo. You can easily find out what a person glories in. If I were to talk to Magnus Carlsen, you know Magnus Carlsen? Siya ang world chess champion ngayon sa kasalukuyan. Pag kinausap ko si Magnus, ano sa palagay mo yung ego glory niya sa kanyang buhay? Yung kanyang pagiging world chess champion. Eh, meron naman talagang masasabi yun kasi champion na nga, nga siya. Sampung taon na siyang champion. Pag nakausap mo yung uh, ospital, oh, ano sa palagay mo yung pinaka-importante sa ospital? Yung kalusugan ng tao. Pag pumunta ka naman sa militar, Anong, pa, anong ginaglorify nila? Yung kanilang armas, yung kanilang lakas, yung kanilang men, yung kanilang warfare. Uh, paano naman pag-Kristyano? Ano yung number one sa atin? Si Jesus Christ. Kaya dapat pag kinakausap niyo yung tao, lagay niyo talaga doon yung pagpupuri ng Panginoon and glorify His name. Alam mo, pag tinanong ka, kumusta ka? Oh, ang sagot ng kristyano dapat, ako ay nagpapasalamat. I am thankful. I am blessed. I am thankful. Tapos sabi nila, ba't ka blessed? Ba't ka thankful? Kasi, God gave us a Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, pasok ka na dun sa conversation patungkol sa Panginoon. Just like that. So, Whatever is number one in your heart comes out in conversation. You ought to learn to glory in the Lord. So thanks, call, make known, sing, talk, glory. Meron pa. Sabi niya dito, let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Rejoice. And seek. Rejoice. Let me ask you a question. Are you rejoicing today? <laughs> so I don't know, are you rejoicing in the Lord? You say, well, you know what? I have a lot of reasons why I'm not joyful in the Lord. Well, you're in sin. A Christian ought to be able to rejoice. There's not, there's not, no one in the world can smile in the middle of tears except a Christian. A Christian ought to rejoice in the Lord. In, kung hindi ka nagre-rejoice sa Panginoon, nasa kasalanan ka. Lalo na pag Kristiyano ka. If you're a Christian and you're not rejoicing in the Lord, ibig sabihin na overwhelm ka ng kasalanan, na overwhelm ka ng kalungkutan, uh, you're not rejoicing in the Lord. That's a violation of Psalm 105 among many other verses in the scriptures. Katulad ng Philippians chapter 4 verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always, always. In every circumstance. Napansin ninyo ha, sabi ng Bible, rejoice in the Lord always. It didn't say rejoice in cancer. It didn't say rejoice in, you know, pain and suffering. We rejoice in the Lord as we experience pain and suffering. You see that? 
Yun ang difference ng Kristiyano. Hindi yung, hindi ako magre-rejoice kasi nandito pa yung sakit. No, we learn to rejoice in the Lord as we experience suffering. And you, you, need, to, you need to decide that. Bago ka pa gumising bukas, mag, mag-desisyon ka na ngayon. Bukas, I will rejoice in the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in Him. Rejoicing is not emotion. It is a will. It is a decision. That I will rejoice in the Lord. <clears throat> so, you can uh, decide. So, Christiano, meron kang choice. You have a choice. Uh, will, you, will you rejoice in the Lord? Or will you allow the flesh to dominate you? Hmm. <clears throat> Say, Brother Bill, akala ko pag Christiano ka, uh, hindi ka na, hindi ka na, purus rejoice ka na lang. No. <laughs> may challenge ang bawat araw. Bawat araw may challenge kung ikaw ay magpapatuloy sa Panginoon or kung ikaw ay madadaig ng sarili mong laman. And so you see, that's an important principle. Rejoice. I hope you're rejoicing in the Lord. Kung hindi ka pumasok na nagre-rejoice sa Panginoon, sana ma yung puso mo ay malambot at matutunan mo na mag-rejoice sa Kanya para paglabas mo dito, may rejoicing ka. Amen? All right, so then seek. It says here, uh, let's see, uh, verse number four. Seek the Lord. Seek His strength. I wonder, do you seek His strength for things? This is the why Christians usually are defeated by temptation and sin. Because they do not seek the Lord and they do not seek His strength. You rely on your strength. And so... That's a violation of 105. <clears throat> seek the Lord, seek His strength. Seek His face evermore. Pray without ceasing, really. But seek His face. So, did you seek the Lord today? I hope you, say, you can say amen with integrity of heart. Seek the Lord every moment. Seek the Lord. Pag nag-iisa ka, seek the Lord. Pag nagsasarili ka, seek the Lord. Pag meron kang time sa umaga, seek the Lord. Bago matulog, seek the Lord. And walk with Him. So you have that. Remember, verse 5. Remember. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. May isa pa. Remember. What are we to remember? Remember His marvelous works that He hath done. So isa sa mga magagandang dapat natin gawin, mag-journal tayo ng mga answers to prayers ng Panginoon para hindi natin makalimutan. No? Biro mo, six years na tayo dito. Sinagot ba ng Diyos yung mga prayers natin? Have we seen God answers prayers in the six years na nandito tayo? Absolutely. And we will be wrong if we forget Because we fail to remember, to recall His wondrous works, His marvelous works which He hath done, His wonders, and the judgments of His mouth. Saan mo makikita yung judgments ng Panginoon? Sa salita ng Diyos. This is a bibliology of David. We are to remember the judgments of His mouth. So pag yung Bible natin hindi preserba, paano natin maaalala yung mga judgments ng Panginoon? Kaya kailangan yung Bible natin, perfect, preserved Bible. Okay, so this is another reason why we use the King James Bible. We use the King James Bible because without that, you cannot remember the judgments of his mouth. Remember, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And so we have a preserved Bible. <clears throat> Verse number 6, Ye seed of Abraham, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen. So what do we have here? Thanks, call, sing, make known. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So there's two seeks. There's 10 things to do. We seek the Lord. 
We rejoice, uh, we rejoice that seek the Lord, and we seek the Lord in His strength, okay? <clears throat> so anyway, those are the ten imperatives of Psalm 105. Now, verse number 7 hanggang verse number 11. Uh, magsisimula tayo sa kasaysayan ng Israel, at nagsimula ang Israel sa pamilya ni... Okay, itong ito ang timeline ng Israel... Nagsimula ang Israel sa pamilya ni Abraham. That's right. Abraham. So, verse 7. He is the Lord, our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He hath remembered His covenant forever, the word which He commanded to a thousand generations. So, preserve talaga yung pangako ng Diyos, yung word of God. Magmula pa sa kapanahunan ni Abraham. Biro mo. Kung meron kang King James Bible, meron kang Genesis, lahat ng mga words na binigay ng Diyos kay Abraham, nandyan sa Bible. Hanggang ngayon! And so, this is an amazing fact that we have the Word of God from the time of Abraham. Saan yung pangako ng Diyos sa aklat ng Genesis? Look at Genesis chapter 12, verse number 1. Genesis chapter 12, and verse number 1. Sa Bible, page 9. Sa sample Bible. But Genesis chapter 12 and verse number 1. Genesis chapter 12, verse number 1. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Verse number three. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So is your family blessed? My family is blessed. You know why? Because of the Abrahamic covenant. I have a part in the blessing of the Abrahamic covenant because I'm united to Jesus Christ. I am in covenant relationship with God and I can, uh, I can guarantee I have the blessing of Genesis chapter 12, verse number 1 to 3. <clears throat> Now, yung lupa para sa Israel yun. E yung born again believer ngayon, hindi naman yung earth sa kanya. Ano yung sa atin? Yung tahanan ng Ama. Heaven is our home. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. So, we don't inherit the earth. Israel inherits the earth. You know what we get? We get something better. We get the Father's house. So, uh, yes, we're blessed. Amen. Amen. We're really blessed. We're triply blessed, doubly blessed. But anyway, so nandun yung pangako ng Diyos kay Abraham. So, verse number 9, Psalm 105, verse 9, which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac. Siyempre, pumasok naman si Isaac. And Jacob. For a law, and confirm the same unto Jacob for a law, and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. Hindi ho magtatapos yung covenant ng Panginoon kay Abraham. God will always have human people on earth for all eternity that will forever do the will of God forever and forever. That's an eternal covenant, everlasting covenant. That's why when you ask a born-again Christian, are you saved? Alam nila na saved sila. Kasi walang katapusan yung covenant ng blessing ng Panginoon na yung physical na buhay natin, may katapusan. Pero yung spiritual na buhay natin, yung blessing ng Panginoon, walang katapusan. There's no end to that. So when you ask a born-again Christian, are you saved? Do you know for sure you're saved? The answer is, I know I'm saved because I'm a, I, I am part of that everlasting covenant. 
may kontrata ang Diyos. Hindi niya babaliin yung kontrata niya. Kaya pag niligtas ka ng Diyos, ligtas ka. Kahit na ikaw palpak, kahit na yung gawa mo bulok, kahit na paminsan hindi, ka, hindi mo ginagawa yung mga imperatives na yan, ligtas ka pa rin. Dahil sa biyaya at grasya ng Diyos sa Panginoong Iso Kristo and His everlasting covenant. All right? Verse number 11 saying, Unto thee will I give the land of Canaan the lot of your inheritance. So, God promised to Abraham a land promise. So, sa ngayon, where is the land promise today? Israel is not occupying the land today. <clears throat> Pero, balang araw, ibibigay ng Diyos kay Abraham at sa mga Hudyo yung lupa ng Israel. Sa ngayon, nag-aaway-aaway sila. Palestinians, Jews, Arabs. Naku, aaway-aaway sila. At napakaliit ng lupa ng Israel ngayon. Yeah. Forever yung mag-aaway hanggang bumalik si Jesus Christ. Pero pagbalik ni Jesus Christ, aangkinin ng Israel kalahati ng lupa ng Egypt, Syria, pataas. Malawak pala ang lupa na binigay ng Diyos kay Abraham. And more so than what we, they're doing, experiencing now. But anyway, <clears throat> may party ba yung Kristiyano dun sa lupa? Wala. Okay, so there's, you have to know that the Christian is not looking to inherit the earth. We are inheriting the Father's house. Okay? <laughs> <clears throat> Now we'll rule and reign on earth with Jesus Christ, but we live in the in the the Father's house. We don't live on earth. <laughs> so, anyway, verse number 12. When they were but a few men in number, yea, very few and strangers in it, strangers in the land of Canaan. When they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sakes, saying, Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. So naalala ninyo si Abraham? Do you remember when Abraham went to Egypt, and the Pharaoh saw his wife, and he said, She's my half-sister, she's my sister. And Pharaoh took her, and Pharaoh wanted to marry her, and God sent a message to Pharaoh. Wag mong galawin yung babae na yan. Hindi niya yung kapatid, asawa niya yun. Nagalit si Pero. Sabi ni Pero, ba't hindi mo ako winorningan? Ha? Susumpahin mo itong is- yung Egypt? Ha? Isinawalin niya si Sarah. Naalala ninyo si Abimelech, Genesis chapter 20, when Abraham went to uh, Gerar and Abimelech saw Sarah and he wanted to get her for his wife and Abraham didn't say anything and <clears throat> God intervened again and told Ab- Abimelech, hey, that is Abraham's wife. Don't mess with her or I will kill you. No. Sabi ni King Abimelech, but hindi mo ako inorningan? Naalala niyo si Shadali Omar? You probably don't remember Shadali Omar. But Genesis chapter 14, Shadali Omar and five kings attacked Lot, yung nephew ni Abraham. And Abraham had to rescue Lot from Shadali Amar. And God killed Shadali Amar. So these, this is true. What, what, uh, all these kings, he, he reproved kings for their sakes. Touch not my anointed, do my prophets no harm. That happened to Abraham. Verse number 16 to verse 23. Ito naman yung kasaysayan ni Joseph in Egypt. So there's Joseph. In Egypt, pumasok sila sa pangaalipin ng Egypt. Egypt. Pumasok sila sa pangaalipin ng Egypt. And you remember, let me see that. Verse 16, Moreover, he called for a famine upon the land, and he break the whole staff of bread. He sent man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant, whose feet they hurt with fetters and laid in iron. So, ginawa siyang alipin. Linagyan siya ng tanikala dito sa leeg, sa kanyang kamay, sa kanyang paa, at binenta siya. By the way, who sold him into slavery? His own brothers did. 
He was sold for a servant, verse 18. Psalm 105, verse 18. Whose feet they hurt with fetters. He was laid in iron until the time of his word, that his word came. The word of the Lord tried him. And king sent and loosed him. Even the ruler of the people let him go free. And he made him lord over his, uh, of his house. Ruler of his substance to the bind is the princess at his pleasure. And teach his senators wisdom. Israel also came into Egypt. There you go. Egypt. I was going to say. <clears throat> Egypt. 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 And Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. So yung land of Ham, naalala ba rin yung si Ham? Si itong Ham, where did Ham come from? Look over in Genesis chapter 10, verse 6. Genesis chapter 10, and verse number 6. Genesis 10, 6, page 8, sa sample Bible. Page 8. And Cush, uh, and the sons of Ham, Cush, Misraim, and Phut, and Canaan. So, galing pala kay Ham, itong mga, mga uh, geographic na mga tao na ito. Si Cush, Ethiopia, Africa. Si Misraim, Egypt. Kaya lupa ni Ham. Kasi yun ang tatay ni, ng Egypt. Misraim. Yung put, Libya. Libya, katabi ng Afrika yun. And uh, Canaan. Yung lupa na, na pinangako ng Diyos kay Abraham. Galing kay Canaan yun. And so, you see that Misraim is Egypt, the land of Ham. The, uh, the progenitor of Egypt. The land of Ham. So there's you have The land of Ham. All right. So verse 24, hanggang verse 36. Naalala niyo nagalipin sila. Do you know how many years they were enslaved? 400 years na enslaved sila ng Egypt. Nakalimutan ng Pharaoh. There was a Pharaoh that came up that forgot Joseph. Naging na, paano naging number one si Joseph sa Egypt? Binigay ng Jos kay Joseph yung prophecy na merong seven years ng kasaganahan. At merong seven years ng kagutuman. So, natuklasan ng Egypt na magla- mag- magkakaroon ng worldwide famine. So, nag-ipon ang Egypt dahil sa report ni Joseph. Ginawa siyang number one ni Pharaoh. Ng hari ng Egypt. Eh, generation ang lumipas. Hindi na naalala ng bagong pero yung si Joseph. Kaya, yung mga tao ni Joseph ginawang alipin. And... God already told Abraham, your, your, your people will go into slavery in Genesis chapter 15. Pero tingnan natin yung verse 24, Psalm 105 verse 24. And he increased his people greatly, made them stronger than their enemies. He turned their heart to hate his people, to deal subtly with his servants. He sent Moses, his servant. So ngayon, pinadala ng Josie, Moses. 400 years later, para ilabas sila sa pangaalipin. And Aaron, ah, pati rin si Aaron, yung kapatid ni Moses. Aaron. Alam mo kung anong tribo si Moses? <coughs> Levi. He's a Levi. <coughs> anyway, uh, uh, verse 27, showed his signs among them and wonders in the land of Ham. Naalala niyo yung signs and wonders? Ilan yung signs and wonders na pinakita ng Diyos kay Pero? Huh? Ilan? Ten. Ten plagues. Those are signs and wonders. Alam mo, lahat ng, lahat ng plagues na pinakita ng Diyos kay Pero ay warning kay Pero. Sana nakinig lang si Pero. Sana nakinig si Pero. Eh, hindi nakinig si Pero. Ang tigas ng ulo niya. Katulad talaga natin. Ilang, ilang warning ang binibigay sa atin ng Diyos? Pero ini-ignore natin yung warning ng Panginoon. You see? Alright? So, uh, uh, so, sa mga susunod na verses, ipapakita ng psalmist yung seven sa sampo na mga plagues. At saka hindi siya order in the same order ng kasaysayan ng Exodus. 
So naalala ninyo nag aral tayo ng Exodus, natuklasan natin yung mga plagues ng Exodus. So here is a summary, uh, and not in order, but a summary. And so David is giving po- taking poetic license and jumbling up the order. It's not in the same order. Verse 27, They showed his signs among them and wonders in the land of Ham. He sent darkness, made it dark. They rebelled not against his word. He turned their waters into blood, slew their fish. Their land brought forth frogs in abundance in chambers of the kings. He spake in diverse sorts of flies and lice in all their coasts. He gave them hail for rain and flaming fire in their land. He smote their vines also and their figs and he brake the trees of their coasts. And he spake the locusts came and caterpillars without number and eat up all the herbs of the land and devour the fruit of the ground. And he smote also all the firstborn of their land, the chief of all their strength. So, pinatay ng Diyos yung firstborn. At doon, ilinabas sila. Naalala ninyo. Verse 37, He brought them forth also with silver and gold. Biro mo? Ilinagay ng Diyos sa puso ng Egyptian na bigay sa kanila yung pera dahil sa pangaalipin nila ng 400 years. So, nagbigay ng reparation yung Egypt sa slavery. So there was reparation for Egyptian slavery, the Israelite slavery. God gave them back the money that they should have been paid for the hard labor that they did for 400 years. So napakarami siguro yung silver and gold. Napakayaman ng Israel. And there uh, was not one feeble person among their tribes. So tinan mo, kalusugan, binigay sa kanila ng Diyos. Verse 38, Egypt was glad when they departed. Napakasaya ng Egypt. Lumayas na sila. Salamat. Wala kaming nakuha sa kanila, kundi sa alot. <laughs> he spread a cloud for a covering and fire to give them light in the night. The people asked and he brought quails. So na ngayon, nasa wilderness wandering na naman, nagsupply ang Diyos sa kanila ng quail, ng mana, bread, remember that, from heaven. He opened the rock sa Exodus chapter 17, naalala ninyo? He opened the rock with the waters gushed out. The first time, God told Moses, strike the rock and the water came out. The second time, God said, speak to the rock. And remember, Moses struck it twice instead of speaking to the rock. At binali ni Moses yung picture ng Panginoong Yeso Kristo na siya ang rock of our salvation na pinako siya once, namatay siya one time lang. Tapos sa susunod, kakausapin na lang siya at magpo-provide siya. Hindi yung pako siya, papakuin siya uli, papako siya, papatayin siya uli. That is a violation of the picture of salvation. And so God had to act, hindi pinayagan ni, ni, ng Diyos na pumasok si Moses sa Canaan. Verse number 42, For he remembered his holy promise and Abraham his servant and brought forth his people with joy and his chosen with gladness. So 40 years pagalagala sila sa wilderness pero nung kapanahon na ni Joshua after 40 years of wilderness wandering with joy and gladness God gave them the land of Canaan through Joshua after 40 years. So it was a it was a time of joy and gladness. Verse 44 and he gave them lands of the heathen and they inherited the labor of the people and that they may observe at the yung dahilan kung bakit pinasok sila sa land of Canaan. Ito yung dahilan kung bakit binigyan sila ng lupa. Verse 45, that they might observe His statutes and keep His laws. Yun. That's the reason why God blessed them. God is expecting them to observe His statutes and to keep His laws. Let me ask you a question. Did Israel observe his statutes and keep his laws when they entered into Canaan? No. No, they did not. And yun ang laman ng 106. Pagdating natin doon next week. But you see the, the history of Israel here. Now, pagkatapos ni Joshua namatay, sino ang namuno? 
Judges. Pagkatapos ng Judges, sino ang namuno? Kings. Tapos, pinasukan sila ng Assyria. Winasak yung Northern Kingdom. Pinasukan sila ng Babylon. Sino uli sila after 70 years? Tapos, 400 quiet years, dumating si John the Baptist. Sa New Testament. After 400 years. Kaya between Malachi and Matthew, walang books. So hopefully you get an overview. Pag na-master nyo ito, mamamaster nyo yung history ng Old Testament. And we're gonna look at Psalm 106 next week, yung kapalpakan ng tao, pero yung deliverance ng Panginoon. But Psalm 105 is all about Jehovah God being a covenant-keeping God. Biro mo? Let me give you an example. Did everybody who served the Lord, were they sinless? No, they were imperfect. They were sinful. Some who served the Lord did their best to serve the Lord. Some failed. Some were carnal. Some were spiritual, like Joseph. He was spiritual. But even though Satan was against them, as Egypt was against them, the world was against them, Abraham was failure. Jacob, sure enough, Jacob was failure. <laughs> God still worked through people accomplishing His covenant. You see that? So, itong masasabi ko. Hanapin niyo ang layunin ng Diyos para sa buhay mo. Kasi kung ano talaga yung layunin ng Diyos, walang makakahad lang sa layunin ng Diyos. Kahit na ikaw, spiritual ka o karnal, kahit na may satanas, kahit na may mababait na talagang sagrado sa Panginoon, sold out to God, It doesn't matter. God is working His will throughout our life. So find the will of God and do it. Because God is working His will. And nothing can, can stop the will of God. Sinners, saints, Satan. None of them stop the will of God. The will of God's carrying on. He's working out a land. He's working out a seed. He's working out a blessing for Abraham. So our responsibility, we need to find the will of God. Pero garantisado yung will of God sa kapanahon na natin ngayon bilang Kristiyano, kasama doon yung church. That's the will of God today. That's why I, I believe yung mga Kristiyano na wala sa church, hindi nag-church, that is antichrist. That is Antichrist. Yung COVID na pumasok na nagsabi, sarado natin yung pagpupulong ng mga simbahan. That is Antichrist. At yung mga Baptist na ninuno natin, sila ay namatay para sa pananampalataya. Mas, mas blessed, blessed sila kesa sa live stream natin ngayon. Pero, thank God, God's gonna work His will no matter what. Sinners, saints, Satan, doesn't matter. So the best thing to do is to jump into the will of God. Find God's will and do God's will. And last word, praise ye the Lord. At yan ang magbubukas sa Psalm 106. Sinasarado ng 105, bubuksan ng Psalm 106. Let's pray and ask the Lord to bless. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the word of God. We thank you, Lord, for the history of Israel, some portion of the history But all throughout the history, we see you working your will in the midst of sinners and saints, even against the devil. Nothing hinders your will. So, Father, I pray that we don't stand against your will. Help us to jump in and fulfill your will for our lives. We love you, Lord, for your faithfulness. We thank you that you are a covenant-keeping God. We certainly would be lost in sin if it weren't for Jesus Christ. So help us to love you and live for you. We praise you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.